Hello, my name is Dr. Julio Novo. I'm a practicing cosmetic OBGYN from El Paso, Texas. I have no disclosures or conflicts of interest to report associated with this lecture. Today I would like to talk about Temesip Anesthetic Breast Surgery, or TAPS, based on our first 604 cases performed in an office-based surgical center. The purpose of this technique is to provide a satisfactory anesthetic effect in order to perform a submuscular placement of breast implants, while at the same time avoiding the use of preoperative or interoperative medications which could compromise informed consent, and also to provide an anesthetic effect and benefits similar to or better than IV or general anesthesia. The anesthetic technique of TABS is based on a modification of the klein tumescent technique while the surgical procedure itself is based on modifications of the Gandhi awake breast augmentation and Pelosi techniques. TAS was created based on legal concerns regarding awake breast augmentation and informed consent. During this procedure, the patient is awake and allowed to assist in choosing her implant size. The use of preoperative and interoperative medications are intentionally avoided with TAS in order to avoid the impairment of cognitive function. Unlike awake breast augmentation, informed consent cannot be challenged in TABS. Patient selection. Patients were selected from December 1, 2008 through January 1, 2013. In the primary breast augmentation group, 529 patients were selected, while in the secondary breast augmentation group, 75 patients were selected. Patients were screened out with medical conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, and bleeding disorders. Smoking was considered a relative contraindication, although smokers were included in the study. Patients were also screened out with psychological disorders. The surgical considerations for the use of TABS are the same as with IV or general anesthesia, as far as implant type, incisional location, or implant placement. All patients in this case series received either an atrial style 68 or style 45 implant. All incisions were made through an inframammary approach, and all implants were placed in a submuscular plane, or what is called a modified dual plane 1, which is a combination of a complete submuscular and dual plane 1, where the pectoralis muscles are scored rather than completely transected, and the anterior serratus muscles are dissected. Surgical limitation of TABS. TABS has the same risk and benefits as other tumescent anesthetic surgeries. Compared to either IV or general anesthesia, TABS provides significant benefits with minimal risks. However, the major limitation of TABS is associated with the surgical correction of capsular contracture grade 3 or grade 4. The general consensus in grade 3 and grade 4 capsular contracture is that capsulectomy rather than capsulotomy should be performed. TABS should not be used as the sole method of anesthesia and capsulectomy. The limitations are due to increased risks of bleeding and limited anesthetic effect of tumescent lidocaine and scar tissue. The maximum amount of lidocaine that should be used in a TABS procedure is based on the patient's body weight measured in kilograms and should not exceed 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight. For example, a patient weighing 70 kilos should not receive more than 3,500 milligrams of lidocaine in a single procedure. We have found, however, that 35 milligrams per kilogram body weight is sufficient for satisfactory anesthetic effect. The tumescent solution is created by mixing lidocaine, epinephrine, and sodium bicarb in a normal saline solution. We like to use 2,250 milligrams of lidocaine in a standard mix, or approximately 750 milliliters of tumescent solution per breast. Approximately 600 to 750 milliliters of tumescent solution is administered along five infiltration points, starting from the xiphoid process laterally to the anterior axillary line, with each point receiving approximately 125 milliliters of tumescent solution. The implant size itself is calculated by using a modified Gandhi base formula and measuring two distances. Distance A is the distance from the lateral sternal line to the anterior axillary line, and distance B is the distance from the lateral sternal line to the mid axillary line. Once the pockets have been created, 
a saline sizer is placed. The sizer volume is either based on distance A or distance B, with the maximum volume usually equal to distance B. For example, if distance B is measured to be 23 centimeters, this is multiplied by 20 milliliters per centimeter. So the maximum volume is 460 milliliters. Once the sizer is placed, the patient is seated and allowed to view her breast in a mirror in both a frontal and profile view. This allows the patient to participate in her final size determination and assist in fine tuning that particular measurement. Total OR time skin to skin is approximately 55 minutes with post-operative management being similar to general anesthesia. The anesthetic effect lasts up to two hours following the surgery and the patient is completely coherent throughout the entire operation and can follow instructions. The patient is usually discharged home approximately 30 minutes after the operation in ambulatory condition. The best use of TABS is the swap out. TABS is very effective for the removal, exchange, or replacement of implants with minimal risk since the pocket has already been formed from the previous surgery. Results. In over 500 primary breast augmentation cases and over 75 secondary breast augmentation cases, no adjunctive medications have been necessary for satisfactory anesthetic effects. Interoperative bleeding has usually been less than 10 cc's per side, with no need for electrocardery. Lidocaine toxicity is dose dependent, with the most common signs being nausea, vomiting, and hypotension. If less than 35 milligrams per kilogram body weight of lidocaine is used, the incidence is 2%. If between 35 and 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight is used, however, the incidence goes up to 50%. Conclusions TABS is a very safe and effective procedure. It is superior to IV and general anesthesia in specific cases. Informed consent is maintained throughout the entire operation. It has excellent effect in primary surgery with limited effect in secondary surgery. It is especially good for simple removal, replacement, or swap out of implants. If you would like to research more information on the subject of TABS, an instructional video is available on YouTube. Our most recently published peer review article is available on our website or in the American Journal of Cosmetic Surgery, September 2012. Thank you very much.